In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you all about be supposed to. This phrase is so important because it's so common and you can start using it too. I am supposed to go. I am supposed to be going. I was supposed to have gone. What's the difference and how do we use these? In this lesson, I'll give you lots of examples. Can you also give me some of your examples in the comments below? I'd love to hear from you. My name's Arnell. Let's start. Let's start with the grammatical structure and then we'll go into more detail. We can do this in two parts. Subject plus B. Here are the B forms you need to remember. I think you're already familiar with these, but I just want to do a little review because in this lesson, when I say B, you know I mean one of these. Hmm. Present and future? Yes. For today's phrase, we can use the present B form, as in I am, you are, etc., to speak about the future. I'll give you lots of examples. Supposed to plus verb. I mean the base verb. I am supposed to eat. Not eats, ate, eating. Supposed to go, supposed to want. Use the base verb with all subjects. And this is a really set structure. Don't try to change it. We wouldn't say, I am supposing to eat. And always include the letter D when you're writing. And this is confusing because when you're speaking, the D is silent. Supposed to eat. Supposed to go. Supposed to want. So when you're writing, remember to keep the letter D. But when you're speaking, the D is silent. That's English. Let's continue with should. What does should have to do with today's lesson? Well, sometimes the best way to learn something is by comparing it to something else. I should exercise more. I want to get healthier. I should clean my room. It's a disaster. We should finish these reports tomorrow. I think we're both too tired now. Are these the speaker's decisions or choices or someone else's? Here, the speaker is making the decisions. She thinks it's best to exercise more. She thinks it's best to clean a room. She thinks it's best to finish the report tomorrow. But what if I'm not talking about the speaker's decision? What if someone else is expecting you to do this? I'm supposed to exercise more. Why? Well, my doctor told me to do this. I'm supposed to clean my room before my mom gets home. She told me to do this. We're supposed to finish our report tomorrow. Suzanne told us to wait until tomorrow. You can see there's an obligation or an expectation coming from someone else. An external source. Let's think of a few external sources. What can tell us to do something? The law? A company? Society. Society or cultures. Drivers are not supposed to go over the speed limit. Notice the position of not for the negative. Male employees are supposed to wear a tie to work every day. When you go to a wedding, you're supposed to bring a gift. People expect this. Can I just use must or must not here? Yes, you can. But how strongly do you want to express this obligation? Must is stronger than be supposed to. I mean, when you go to a wedding, you must bring a gift? Really? You must? Mm, does this happen if you don't bring a gift? Get off of me! Get off of me! Get this! No, you're supposed to. And a lot of times when the verb is obvious, we can just drop it. You're supposed to. You know and I know I'm talking about bringing 
a gift. I want you to watch a little clip. In this clip, the woman is talking about her boss who wanted to fire her because she didn't like one of his favorite movies. The only way I could talk him out of it was that I agreed to go and visit the Tunisian desert. Tunisia? That's where they filmed the movie. It's supposed to inspire me. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. Okay, first things first. To talk someone out of something means you persuade someone not to do something. For example, mm, my best friend wanted to get a Medusa tattoo on his back, but phew. I talked him out of it. He didn't do it. So this character persuaded her boss not to fire her. It's supposed to inspire me. Watch your facial expression again. It's supposed to inspire me. Here it's clear this is not her decision. This is an external expectation. So far in this lesson, I've spoken about expectations and obligations, but we can also use be supposed to when there's an expectation because we've heard about it, but we don't necessarily have any personal experience. Is your back still hurting you? You should see Dr. Stevens. He's supposed to be the best chiropractor in town. Do I know Dr. Stevens? No, but I've heard this, so I believe it's true. Have you seen the movie Farmer Raid? It's supposed to be terrible. Do I know it's terrible? No, but lots of people have told me it's terrible, so I expect this is true. Mini review. Should can be used for personal obligations. I should cook tonight instead of ordering a pizza. Be supposed to can be used for obligations or expectations coming from someone else. In my apartment, we're not supposed to have pets. I would love a dog, but we're not supposed to have pets. Must is stronger than be supposed to. For security reasons, passengers must not leave their luggage unattended. Unattended means without a person. So at an airport, you can't leave your bags like this, unattended. And remember, in English, there are lots of ways to use should and must. I'm just comparing them to be supposed to in this lesson. Finally, be supposed to can be used when we expect something to be true because we've heard about it. We should go to the Blue Riviera for dinner. They're supposed to have excellent food. Let's look at another way to use be supposed to. And this is where I think be supposed to really shines. We have an expectation that isn't met. Oh man! This can cause anger, disappointment, or surprise. I was supposed to have 10 students in my class this morning, but only three showed up. Show up means arrive. Only three students arrived. I couldn't really do all the activities I had planned with just three students. Did I expect 10 students? Yes. Did I get 10 students? No. Imagine a parent. My daughter is 35. She's so old. She's supposed to be married. She's supposed to have kids by now. Does a parent expect these things? Yes. Is her expectation being met? No. Why isn't the projector working? We're supposed to give our presentation in five minutes. Notice how I use are. I use a present B form, even though I'm speaking about the future. Perfectly correct. The examples I've given you kind of have a negative feeling, right? But it doesn't always have to be negative. Mm. I was only supposed to have three students in my class this semester, but eight more students joined unexpectedly. Hmm. 
it's not always a negative thing. The kids are supposed to be sleeping, but I can hear them playing upstairs. You took the students shopping? You were supposed to be showing them around the city. My parents are supposed to be arriving on Monday, but I'm not sure if their flight will be canceled because of all the snowstorms. Supposed to be plus ing. Can I just use the base verb like earlier? Yes, you can. But when we use the ing form, it's like the present continuous and past continuous. We're really focusing on the action happening in the moment, like I am talking to you, or an action that was happening in the past. I won't go into detail about the continuous tenses, but I do have a full lesson on this topic on my channel, and I'll link it down below for you. Let's take a look at an example from the novel I'm reading called Career of Evil by Robert Galbraith. The main character is on her phone in the hospital. A nurse says to her, you're not supposed to be using that in here. Why is ing used? Because just like the present continuous, the nurse is focused on the action happening now. Here's another example from the same book. I've just remembered. I was supposed to be meeting Elin last night. The character is focusing on the action of meeting specifically. Is it possible to just use to use or to meet? Yes, but the continuous form emphasizes the action happening in that moment. Which sentence is more natural? She's been on her phone all day. She's supposed to work. She's supposed to be working. The second option. Why? I'm focusing on this action now. Look at her. She isn't working, but she's supposed to be working. Common question. What's the difference between be going to and be supposed to? We've already looked at be supposed to. We know that's for obligations or expectations. We use be going to for the speaker's intention. Let's compare. I'm going to go to the party tonight. I'll see you there. I'm supposed to go to the party tonight. It's my boss's 50th. Erin was going to clean her apartment before her trip, but she didn't have time. Erin was supposed to clean her apartment before she moved out, but she didn't have time. Sometimes these two phrases can be used interchangeably because a lot of times our intention can become an obligation or an expectation can become an intention. For example, mm, I'm so sorry, I was going to send you the contract on Monday, but I got distracted. I'm so sorry, I was supposed to send you the contract on Monday, but I got distracted. You know, in this situation, it's a professional work environment, your intention, your obligation. Yeah, here, these two mean the same thing. However, I want to give you one last example so you can see they're not always interchangeable. Oh my god, I love these chocolates. I'm going to buy more. Oh my god, I love these chocolates. I'm supposed to buy more. The second example doesn't work. If you're the one who loves the chocolates, why, why would anyone tell you to buy more? <laughs> okay? Mini review again. We can use be supposed to when we expect something, but it doesn't happen. Hmm, it was supposed to snow last night, but it didn't. I guess we can't build our snowman. We can use be supposed to be plus ing like the present or past continuous. Why are you cleaning? You're supposed to be resting. Doctor's orders. Be going to is normally used for the speaker's intention. 
I'm going to increase my sales by 50% this quarter. And there are lots of ways we can use be going to in English, but again, I'm just comparing it to be supposed to for today. Phew. Okay, last part for today, I promise. We can make the past sound more formal by using the first structure instead of the second structure, the one we've been looking at. Be supposed to have plus the past participle. The past participle is verb number three. Eat, ate, eaten. Eaten is a past participle. Mm. Talk, talked, talked. Talked is a past participle. And it's always have. Don't change it to has. It's have for all subjects. Let's compare. Mm. Her graduation was supposed to have been the best day of her life, but she was disappointed. Her graduation was supposed to be the best day of her life, but she was disappointed. More formal, less formal, less formal and more common. I was supposed to have been given a vegetarian meal on the flight, but I got meat. Why do I have two verbs after have? Have been given. This is the passive voice. I have a lesson on the passive voice, which I'll link down below for you. I was supposed to be given a vegetarian meal on the flight, but I got meat. More formal, less formal. I want to show you a few real life examples. Here is an article from Harvard Business Review about the London Airport Heathrow Terminal 5. It was supposed to have been the moment when British Airways showed the world the future of travel. Instead, the opening of, and it continues, you can see a past expectation that did not happen. The word instead also helps give you that contrast. Could the writer have used it was supposed to be? Yes, but the original version sounds more formal. Now, I want to show you a different function. Let's look at a headline from countrylife.co.uk. Beavers discovered living on River Avon 400 years after they were supposed to have gone extinct. And when an animal goes extinct, the species dies. Like the dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are extinct. Hmm, was there an expectation or obligation for beavers to go extinct? No. Sometimes this structure is used to express what we think happened in the past, but we are not so sure. This Wikipedia page is talking about the months in the calendar January and February. Ianarius and Februarius were supposed to have been added by Numa Pompilius, passive voice, the second king of Rome, originally at the end of the year. It is unclear when the Romans reset the course of the year so that January and February came first. Again, this wasn't an obligation or expectation, but it's what we think happened in the past. We are not 100% sure. In summary, we can use this structure to make the past more formal or to speak about something we think happened in the past, but we're not entirely sure. Leave me some examples down below. I can't wait to make another video for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.